if you've clicked on this video, I'm pretty sure you have some type of interest in the Yu-Gi-Oh card game. Whether it is the show or a friend that has referred you to this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to play Yu-Gi-Oh. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys, this card game is pretty complicated, and I can't explain every single facet in one video. I plan on actually breaking it down into a couple of series so you guys can understand every single detail in this Yu-Gi-Oh card game. But more importantly, I want you guys to become a master at this card game and get your game on. Now, that was from the second season, so that's a pretty good pun. As Yugi Moto would say, it's time to duel. So I'm going to be showing you guys the basics of Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay, so when this video is over, I want you guys to take two things away from this. Um, understanding your win condition or your objectives in Yu-Gi-Oh! And also being able to, to identify which cards are which because there are quite a few different color cards in this Yu-Gi-Oh! game. And I don't want you guys just looking at them all lost. So basically, the main objectives in Yu-Gi-Oh! There are three different types of objectives. One of the objectives is the most common objective is to reduce your opponent's life points to zero. Now, basically, life points is a numerate value that you put on a play. Uh, such as me or you when we're playing against each other and think of it more of as a health bar so basically both players start off with 8,000 life points and through monster attacks or card effects you can reduce your opponent's life points to zero and once you do you'll win the game the next way to win the game is if a player is not able to uh, draw additional cards from their main deck to their hand so that is more of a more riskier way to try to reduce your opponent's deck size because more often than not it gives them certain things that they can do but if they're unable to draw at the start of their turn then they won't be able to win the game as well another way is through a certain win condition so there are monsters that have effects really powerful effects that'll win you the game but more often than not they require you to do so much to obtain that win also keep in mind games are played in best two of three so you'll have another shot at winning the game if you do lose your first round Okay, so now that you know the objective of the game, you can now construct a deck that consists of no less than 40 cards, but no more than 60 cards. In most cases, you're going to want to stick to 40 as your minimum. Your deck, I'll call it your main deck from now on, should consist of monsters. Now, there are quite a few different types of monsters, but all of them have this one thing in common that go inside of your main deck. They all have an attack and defense score. They all have a level and attribute and definitely they have a different type of color coding to them now there are normal effect pendulum and ritual monsters all of these in their respective color coding that go inside of your main deck other monsters that are not labeled these cards do not go inside of your main deck try putting together monsters that work really well with each other monsters that tend to have the same parts of a name we're going to call it an archetype tend to work together to accomplish a goal also finding a balance within your deck is important some decks require you to have as little as 10 monsters inside of your main deck while other mo other decks require you to have 30 so figuring out exactly what your strategy does is going to be pivotal to how many or to deciding how many monsters go inside of your deck now that we're done about that we can talk about spells which are a little less complicated than monsters spell cards are all color coded teal now i'm no art major but green definitely didn't look like a color i would want to call them a uh, one thing i want you guys to keep in mind is that they were once called magic cards those aren't anything different from spell cards they are one in the same now spell cards are typically used to enhance your monsters or even your gameplay and can be typically played on your turn uh and as many times during your turn now obviously there are a lot of spell cards that can break this rule but that is basically the general synopsis of spell cards there are plenty different types of spell cards um while they don't all have a different color they have a different symbol a uh, normal spell cards have no symbol whatsoever equipped spell cards actually equip themselves as an item to a monster to enhance that monster's capabilities field spell cards typically affect all of the monsters on the field and even have their very own zone that you can place them into quick play spell cards are seemingly like 
really fast spell, spell cards that can be activated during your opponent's turn and in certain parts of your turn that normal spells couldn't be activated and continuous spells just stay on the field and apply their effects continuously so now that we have all of that done oh i forgot about ritual spell cards my apologies used to summon a specific type of blue monster from your hand to your side of the field so spell cards are huge at boosting your deck and are pivotal to it keep in mind like i said before you can activate as many spell cards during your turn as you wish unless a card specifies other words and also more often than not you can only use spell cards during your turn the last type of cards that go into your main deck are trap cards now these magenta colored cards are extremely powerful but can only be used after they have been set face down for an entire turn but the upside of this is that these cards effects can be used on your opponent's turn and typically have a way to disrupt your opponent's strategy there are three different types of trap cards one being normal trap cards with no symbol on them whatsoever another being counter trap cards these trap cards can not only be used but the only way to respond to counter trap cards is with another counter trap card and then continuous trap cards these cards remain face up on the field after being activated now again counter trap cards are used to disrupt the opponent's strategy but more so you don't want too many of these because you won't be able to build on your strategy you want to find a good balance between your monster cards cards that you're going to use to reduce your opponent's life points to zero or fulfill your objective spell cards to enhance those cards and trap cards to disrupt your opponent now that we're done with that we can talk about the other two decks some of you people that are familiar with Yu-Gi-Oh! have been like Kali Effect. You have made it quite some crazy monsters from my main deck. Why don't those go in the main deck? Well, there are a specific deck for these cards. Exceed monsters, Synchro monsters, Link monsters, and Fusion monsters all go into a special place called your extra deck where you can only have 15 of these cards. Now, these cards are very powerful and typically require you to use monsters previously on your side of the field to summon them, but they have some awesome effects, whether it's to improve your strategy or to toolbox your way into performing certain mechanics that your opponent possibly might not overcome these monsters are extremely powerful and that's why they are limited to that deck alike you keep them alongside your main deck and you don't shuffle them into your main deck you use them when the time is right Now that I am done talking about the main deck and the extra deck, we're going to be talking about a third specific deck that is used. You don't necessarily play these cards while you're playing the game. You use them in between your match of best of two or three. So for example, if I lose a game in our best of two or three bout, I would be able to take these cards and add them to my main deck or my extra deck to change up my strategy. Now there is one specific rule between your side deck. If I am to place cards in my side deck into my main deck or extra deck, my main Main deck and extra deck must remain the same amount so you're essentially swapping cards out for example if i have a 40 card main deck and a 15 card extra deck and a 15 card side deck my numbers must remain the exact same number before i enter the next game with my opponent it's going to be pretty pivotal but more importantly the side deck allows you to change up your strategy alter your strategy or even disrupt your opponent's strategy now that we're done explaining the win conditions of the game and identifying certain type of cards you're going to want to find yourself in a opponent and determine who's going to go first you're going to probably determine who's going to go first by rolling dice and seeing who has the highest number that player will get to choose who goes first from there you guys are going to take turns going through phases of the game you guys want to learn about phases of the game well you're going to have to stick to the next video where i explain in depth how that works thank you guys so much for watching another segment of the cali effect if you guys want to see more content from this awesome channel then go ahead and click on the video at the end screen annotation but more importantly, you can support this channel and get some awesome rewards by visiting this Patreon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, please like, comment, subscribe, but most of all, enjoy.